Hi, good afternoon and welcome back. I'm Kyle Lamont, your host of TheTerrific.com. We're streaming live here at NAB 2017 in Vegas, baby. Day two of events, we've been hanging out, talking to movers, groovers, makers, and doers all morning, all afternoon. We've been talking content, we've been talking VR, drones, you name it, we're talking about it. I'm excited though to move into the syndication space. And I am, we're gonna just talk with probably two of the best guys in the field right now. We have, drum roll, right? Uh, Troy Witt of President, the president of Take One Productions, the biggest company, that you've never heard of. He's working with major brands here. We're gonna let him explain a little bit more. And then also Rudy Ellis of Switchboard.Live. And uh, we're just gonna really go for the syndication, how it operates, especially in the live stream space. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about Take One Productions? Well, we're a video production company that works mostly in the live event and live to the web space. So our clients are doing live shows all over the world, all the time. It seems some weeks we're doing 10 live shows in a week, and we stream it. I mean, it used to be it had to go to some TV station, you know, satellite truck and all that, but now we can do it from anywhere with a fly pack of gear that's literally just in luggage cases, and um, it's awesome. It's so much fun. And you're, so you're hosting things like graduations, like major corporate events. Like I love, again, how video has the power to connect and there's just everything in all fields happening. We just talked to Humane Society. I mean, corporate events, graduations, these are huge moments for people to connect. Talk about that one graduation ceremony where you had a huge engagement. Well, I mean, we have a major university in the country that we do a lot of their graduations. And it's a huge undertaking to fly to different arenas around the world, around the country for them, and multicam live switch these ceremonies to the web. But when they started and we started syndicating it for them, not only to one platform, but to um, Facebook, when that gets shared by a graduate and that gets shared by their parents to all their social media networks, they would see over a million impressions be made with one commencement ceremony. So now, instead of our budget only coming from the commencement budget of this line item that they've got to pay for, of like, well, I guess we got to stream it to the web, now the marketing team is actually paying for the commencement because this is a huge marketing opportunity for them to showcase their students. So it's been huge. So what's great is you work on sort of the content side. I love it like in this whole production world, there's a, there's a yin and a yang, right? And then so you're working on the back end, right? You are helping content creators with the syndication and you've really streamlined the, the process. Yeah. Talk to me about what your website and what your, your company helps people do. Sure, thanks for having me. Um, so just, you know, just what he mentioned here is we're taking that video and we're enabling it to be on all the different destinations. So Facebook is obviously one of those destinations. YouTube, um, you know, Twitch, your own web player, Apple TV, Roku. Our goal is to take that one source stream and make sure it can reach all the destinations that make sense for your viewing audience. Where are you based out of? We're based out of Orlando, Florida. Um, so, yeah, you know. Very nice, fun. Nice. Where are you based out of? We're in Tustin, California, near okay. Orange County. Okay. So... I mean, is this like for you as like, um, what was your aha moment where you were like, you know what, I'm sort of bothered by the, I'm bothered by <laughs> the hardships of well, syndication. It, How did you come up question. with the programming yeah, behind it? Yeah. Um, so the client of ours was in South Florida. They actually said, hey, Rudy, is there a way where instead of rolling out, you know, multiple computers or laptops or encoders, is there a way where I can have one machine set up? And I could send that to my, my website here and my, also my secondary website without having to rely on the bandwidth and have multiple people. And, and that's just the technical part, right? Think about if you were going to different platforms, you now have to schedule that platform, put all the information in, right? So those are things that people don't think about. And, and so I'm like, you know, I think there's a way to do that. And so I kind of created some, some back-end little rudimentary setup. And this was in um, 20, I think the beginning of 2013. And probably about eight or so months later, 
I actually know the date. It was August 22nd, 2013. That's when that aha moment occurred where someone else asked me, hey, is there a way to do this? And I'm like, wait a minute. This is becoming a build thing this. here. Yeah, let's just build this. Let's make it so that someone can sign up, sign in, and, and, and do the exact same thing. And so we've been doing that ever since. So what once took like, all right, I need this button to go to Facebook. I need this button button to go to Periscope. Yep. You know, you've you've pushed. What, what did you say? You said control pan. I want to nail this. Go for it. Control panel, login, and go. Yeah. Simple. That's Three how steps. simple. So yep. at, at your product allows people to do that. Our whole thing that is easy. Yeah. It's when you think about. I want to go live, right? I have, I have fans. I have people that want to watch this content. Where do I need to go? So I have a great production staff. I have a break. You know, that's in place. Where am I going to send it? That's where we want to be that. We, we're how you do live. So that's, that's the whole goal with Switchboard Live. So for and you- one thing that I can add that is really awesome on your platform, because we started using your platform about six months ago, I okay. think. And I always felt awkward asking my clients, let's say their Facebook account, Oh, can we get the login for your Facebook? Oh, account, yeah, right? good point. I don't want yeah, to yeah. hold a major corporation login for their Facebook for their social media because God forbid something happens in my office. They're looking right back at and you. That right? gets out. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you guys have an awesome thing. I think it's called StreamShare. StreamShare. And this guy's selling it for me. I love so, it. <laughs> yeah, with one click, I can have an email sent through their service to the client, and the client can allow me only to stream to their media on a certain date and it auto expires. And so it, it keeps everybody in the right play space all together. That's awesome. It's, it's funny that that feature was developed where we were streaming an event and it was going to 10 different YouTube channels. And some of these channels were, you know, actually some influencers that had, you know, five, 10 million subscribers. And like, oh yeah, we'll just get their pastors. I'm like, I don't know if that's going to happen. Right. 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 And so the, the goal was, well, let's figure out a way where by a click of an email, you can, accept that and then go through that process and um it's something we don't talk about enough but you're absolutely right it's 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 invaluable once you realize the the access that you're asking for you know and so um so yeah i appreciate you bringing that up uh this is real time real live kind of (laughs) i love it uh let's talk about the facebook stream we were talking a little bit about uh, oh, hello, surprise, there's an ad all of a sudden in the middle of it. What sorts of things are you coping with with that new development in the Facebook world? Well, I haven't seen that yet. So um, that's, that's, I know that they recently started um, the support for mid-rolls, right? That's what you're referring to, the mid-rolls? I haven't seen that yet. But for us, since we're sending the stream there, that's something that's going to happen on the Facebook site. So, you know, right now I don't know if that's an impact on us or if that's something we can control. From a development standpoint, we're going to look into that more because we are a Facebook partner, so we work with them really well. Um, but I haven't seen anything. You, he, you Those, brought up a little bit of a challenge or something. Well, I mean, anytime you're not paying for a service, and if you're going live to a platform mm-hmm. and you're not paying them, they're monetizing it somehow. I mean, you got to figure out that it's being paid for somehow. So if, if you're paying your CDN, um, let's say you pay for a pro account, at Livestream or Ustream or any number of those, they're not putting ads against it. You own that space for that time. Yep. But if you're going to YouTube uh, YouTube Live yeah. or you're going to Facebook Live, and they've said openly, we're going to put ads against this stuff. And it could be as simple as a lower third ad. It could be a pre-roll ad. You have no control over who those advertisers are. And I had a client that I advised to use our white label CDN so that they wouldn't have any issues. And they said, no, 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 we want to stream to our university site, which I knew was a free CDN page. And uh, they streamed their inauguration of their um, new university president. And one of their trustees across the country was watching. And at the bottom came a pop-up ad for (laughs) a competing for-profit online university. Wow. And this... That was targeted. we go, totally, right? Yeah, well, that was targeted. Think about yeah. it. If you're, a face, if you're on Facebook Live for car manufacturer X, well, who would be watching? Car aficionados. Yeah. Who would be a great ad to put up? A competing car company. Yep, exactly. Whose ad do you not want so coming like you on have your to, unveiling? Like, like, like develop a blocker or something maybe for that. That's actually a good question. I mean, I, I think what, what, you know, what you're talking about is just the platform itself, right? Yeah. It's, it's, they're going to invoke that. And you have to, as a content creator, keep that in mind. So it's if you're willing to risk 
an ad from a competing product user, whomever, to show up, then I guess you have to deal with that. For us, um, I think what we would want to do is support it in such a way where if you want it to trigger an ad, it's going to be an ad that makes sense for, for your audience. And then you are reaping some of those rewards from a rev share. So it's that, a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. But having an ad that you don't control show up when you don't want it to control, then I think that's a lose-lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Homer Simpson doubt yeah. moment. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you take me to your office? What are we talking with your bandwidth? Like, how, how, how does all that stuff operate for you? What kinds of towers are you working on? I mean, you guys, how, how many people do you have in your office? Like, is we're, this a We're big... lean. We're lean yeah? and mean. No. See, think about it. The power of what we're doing is we're using the cloud. So our office has, I mean, has nothing to do with what you're doing here. So wherever you're at, wherever you're streaming to, it's going to our cloud infrastructure. Now, we have multiple presence across, you know, Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services, so we can use the power of the cloud to distribute. So for us, we keep things really low, and because we're not serving the masses, one of our streams going to you know four destinations. That's only four streams, but that can be four million people watching it. So we're we're right before the masses. So it's it's um it's strategically set up that way as well. So for us, it's it's really lean to me. You're between the CDN and the producer. That Correct. Yep. Critical spot right there. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You don't have to serve the major CDN and provide five million streams. Yep. You have to provide four. But that, to me, as a content producer, is a huge thing. Because, as you said before, otherwise, what we'd have to do for this university and stuff is we'd bring multiple encoders. And if you're at a venue like a convention center or something, you can be paying $500,000 for yeah. a Ethernet line. And that's a five meg Ethernet line. So that's good for one stream. Okay, well now I need two or three or whatever. Yeah. So I got to get multiples of those and multiple encoders, and my client is now being charged for all that. And but now, click of a button, boom. And then if you've got a guest on your show that you want to go to their Facebook page through your system, bam, you just send me an email right before the show and say, "Hey, um, Troy, accept my stream share. I accept the stream share." He adds it right in the list, and bam, it goes right to there too. So does he get the Game Changer Award? Yeah. Of, of, That's very cool. Uh, NAB. It's I funny. love the enthusiasm. It's funny that Troy uses that scenario. I've actually been at an event where it was actually with um, Gibson Guitars. Uh -huh. Beverly Hills Showroom. They had a, a, a ba like four different bands. And so we were streaming um, just the band segments. You know, it went live when they went on and went live when it, and then turned off when they went off, right? But then what we realized is the band members also have Facebook pages. Right. So they were actually standing in line to authorize their channels. So it went from four to like 15 because they wanted that archive on their Facebook page so they can share to their friends, share to their family, as well as their band. So it's, and you know, it, it really involves the, the ability for that kind of viral element. So you have more people that are watching it. And so that's what I see that the power of what we're doing. And, and hopefully, um, you know, we continue that as well. So as uh, for you, I'm really interested, what kind of, what, when did you start using Live View and what was, what kind of pack or like, uh -huh. I mean, you use, you do big corporate events. We like, do. I mean, and, do you... and, well, our big issue always was my, my nightmare the night before any show or getting on site at any show was always that ethernet connection. I mean, it was, I didn't get a site visit because that cost thousands of dollars to go there. Right. And I was always like. I hope this works. I've talked to an IT guy, and those IT guys love to not be on site when you need them on site, right? You're right. Unfortunately, I've been there. Oh, my gosh. I've been there. And you're yeah. like, my whole show, all the rest of this is for naught if I don't have this one yep. cable. He's right. He's absolutely right. And Or if we had a show literally here in Las Vegas that somebody went into the closet at the hotel and repatched the switch mid-show. We went off the air. And so this is, was my nightmare scenario at every job. And if we're doing 10 of these a week, trust me, there's a lot of stress that my wife was, you know, getting to hear about. And so I was looking around and I was like, look, we've got so much cellular bandwidth now with 4G. This has got to be doable. And it just wasn't usable through the Jetpack or through the single USB stick that I had already. Um, I mean, Verizon is great and they had really good LTE, but it wasn't consistent the bandwidth goes up and down, and I was like, it's got to be bonded across multiple lines, and I knew that. So I went out and started looking at the market, and Live View is the freaking name in that space. I mean, they have been doing it for years and years and years. 
and they've got it down for if all you got is 500k, they will figure out how to get your stream across it. So we put them through the ringer last year. I feel bad for George at LiveU because I went through every model in their lineup, and I ended up on the Solo, which is a really affordable, incredible little yeah. box yep. that bonds Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and multiple cells. As one power source As to one, stream? one pipe to stream out of. And I on site, my guys on site don't have to worry about how the magic happens. That's what LiveU does. That's what LiveU does. Yeah. And I love demoing it to clients on site when we're like rehearsing or something like this because what I will do is I'll plug into Ethernet. I usually want to get Ethernet because it's going to be really reliable, high bandwidth. But I've got the two cells bonded onto it and Wi-Fi. Sometimes it's jetpack. Sometimes it's the infrastructure. But what I'll do is I'll tell, tell the client, like, this is your worst nightmare. And I will grab the Ethernet line and I will midstream pull it out of the live view. Right? That is like death. Anxiety right, right? now. Death is going what to happen. Anxiety happening. Oh, this isn't even the scenario. Right? And, and I have them watch the output video coming from our server. Like, you tell me when you, wa- when you see that that Ethernet line got pulled. And the, the stream continues totally seamlessly. And then if I'm really feeling good that day, then I take even one of the cells and I just go, bunk, and I pull that off too. And now they're like, eyes have popped out of their head. <laughs> Point but, proven, right? Right, but yeah, it's like yeah. the live, you will navigate that by c- compressing the stream, getting it out over the available bandwidth, and putting it out. And then when I take yeah. the Ethernet and I put it back in, the stream gets better, but it, it just works. And it's the thing that allows us to sleep at night before a show and not have a heart attack on site. And that's huge because think about it. If you're watching something and it goes black, you lost those viewers, right? You, you can't get them back. So you have to have reliability. We were talking earlier this morning, or our first guest, we, we talked about live VR streaming. And let's just go there, guys. Wow. Uh, we talked everything from the bandwidth, obviously, is the big, you know, elephant oh. in the room. Um, but, you know, just... Where are you going with the VR, 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 uh, and where are you going? And let's let's go there. For us, it's simple, right? So whatever you're producing, whatever type of content, whether it's VR-related, if it's, you know, you know live stream or, or, you know, just produced locally at the venue, you're going to send that signal to us, and we're going to send it out. And because we're not touching it, we're not doing anything to it, for us, it's the same thing. So we're, we're easy not... Easy in, easy out. Easy in, easy out, exactly. Format. So as long as the platform's support the type of content you're, create, you're creating, then, um, then that's, that's our job is to make sure it reaches that in the right format. So for us, whatever comes in, we're going to send it right back out at the same high quality to all the various destinations. Then, so if you're doing 360 video, you need to go to you know, Facebook and, and Periscope, there you go. We, we have the ability for you to do that. You know? Doesn't really, um, the bandwidth or the 4K streaming you're gonna doesn't need more matter. Of it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to need more of it. So on a flip side, we're going to need more of that as well. But that's the power of the cloud, right? So for us, whatever's coming in, we'll send it out at that same exact bit rate coming in. Now, on the flip side, if you do need to lower it, we have the ability to do that as well. So we can take a real high-quality stream and then drop it down for some of the, de- the destinations that require that as well. So whatever's coming in, we're going to send it right back out at that same high bit rate as well. Are clients coming to you more and more? Hey, we, we're thinking of doing a VR event. and uh, what They are, are thinking about uh, how doing it. How does pre-production we, go we, now? Pre-production is huge on that, right? Because if the viewer can see 360, they can see the TD back there and the audio guy and the client and the other guys watching us. Um, So you have to, as a producer, start thinking in 360. That's going to be really difficult. But we've actually already had clients wanting to do 3D side by side. Um, Whoa. So, you know, the Google Cardboard. You know what that is? So the Google Cardboard, right, that you can put your phone in and see 3D. And if you go to, if you get a Google Cardboard, which you can get on Amazon for five bucks if you don't want to build your own, um, you can watch movie trailers and all kinds of content in 3D. And it's also uh, VR enabled. Um, But we actually have clients that do live um, eye surgery. And the microscope that the doctor is looking through is dual ocular. It's in 3D. He's operating and able to see the depth. But our online viewers... And the record people aren't able to see that 3D depth. So what we're actually 
getting into right now, and we've got our first client lined up to do it, is do we're going to mail all the people that sign up for the live webcast a branded Google Cardboard that they can put their device in. Awesome. And we will get dual video takeoff from the microscope, and we will have a dual video 3D camera rig in the OR, and the doctors that are watching this live surgery will actually be watching it in 3D, which for a doctor operating in the eye is critical for them to be able to see the depth. They're going to see the doctor's point of view as he's doing surgery. Yes. They Whoa. see they see through the microscope exactly what the doctor is seeing. We do a lot of live surgery and a wow. lot of ocular stuff. Again, it's always like coming. I love talking to live guests. Live surgery? Like, you would not have thought that's a... Uh, it's, it's huge because think about it this way. If you're a doctor in Korea okay. and somebody at Will's Eye Institute or Mayo Clinic or wherever in the world is doing a new surgery or is doing something groundbreaking, you want to get that out and you want to share it Got it. For training or for somebody to serve a client that's got the same problem. And having that video available, not only live so you can have interaction with the, the physician doing it, yeah. but for the archive, yeah, for them to I be able you. to see, oh, this you. is that technique. Yeah. It's huge. And uh, it's really neat. We've been really fortunate to be in that space. And it's really exciting, obviously, right? <laughs> I get excited about um, it. We also had a great uh, d discussion about engagement. Um, so when you're streaming live, are you, you're tuned in to viewers constantly yes. tweeting or commenting, all yes. that fun stuff. Does that affect you at all? Or, you know, with constant engagement or, you know, is um, that something you consider? So, yeah. So some of the platforms, we actually support their messaging, right? So um, if you're on YouTube and um, and you're, you're using our platform to go to a couple destinations, you can actually see the comments that are coming in from those destinations, right? This is something we started early on. Um, our, our early adopters in our platform were, were gamers, right? So think about you're playing a game, you're streaming to these platforms, um, and your hands are occupied, so you can't type back. But you can read messages and verbally answer it. Hey, Paul. Hey, Troy. Hey, uh, you know, how's it going, right? And you can answer those questions. And so we added support for those. It's something we, we are looking to, to add more support for for the platforms. But um, you have to. You have to be able to engage because that's one of the, the values of, of live streaming is being able to take a question or take a comment and then be able to provide that back. So for us, it's just supporting it in a right way because especially if you're going to all these different destinations, you want to be able to not alienate you know, that, 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 that viewer. So having a way to do so is something we're, we're looking into as well to, be, to make it more engagement. And for our viewers, I mean, Q&A, we have actually built our own Q&A engine because we needed multiple ways for it to come in we want Q&A that's, the comments are great, but for our clients who are paying, we don't want maybe not be compliments to their brand or whatever. So we, we want them heavily moderated. We need legal to be able to review the comment before it gets posed to a physician that makes sense. or yeah. somebody about yeah. a car or yep. something like that. So ours is blind. Um, our, our platform, um, you post your question and it gets sent to um, oftentimes an iPad on the set. And the, the um, talent can see the comments and questions come in, and they can respond to them. And that viewer engagement is huge. Clients want that, and the viewers want to be able to engage, you know, with, with people too. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, some type of moderated kind of, yeah, that's key. I could see that. It's like having a chat bot, but available oh, yeah. to, you know, micromanage the chat. Or something, right? Well, you just you just don't want to open it to the rest of the internet trolls that might be out there because it gets distracting, yeah. right? It would be like Takes allowing away. at a, I mean, and and I put it on a lot of terms to our clients about imagine a live audience being here, and imagine if they were all allowed to talk at the same level as we yeah. were it's at amazing. the same time, it would be really hard to engage yep. um, appropriately. Yep. So we keep that so that it's quiet in the room, right? Um, What's one of the biggest, um, I guess, uh, metric-wise, what was one of the biggest things that you were able to help happen? It's a good question. Um, that I know about probably last year, so there's an event um, done every year out in L.A. called E3. It's where all the game publishers um, mention or they do all their announcements for all their, their upcoming games for the year. And um, one of the clients, I think the number in the years past, it was like four times the amount of subscribers or viewers than they've, they've had in the past just by leveraging 
multiple social platforms that made sense. And it was probably four or five. You know, you had the Game Companies channel. You had um, the actual Games channel. You had, it, it, you know, that makeup made that just the reach there. And so they were ecstatic to be, to be able to go to like four, four or five times the number of viewers that they normally had. Yeah. With, this, with the same equipment, no additional work. So that's the thing that's really key there as well. So it's just being able to reach those platforms, um, you know, super easily. Yeah. What about sporting events? You know, is that sort of in your wheelhouse too? And for you, like, do you get into the sports or is it contained more to just events? It's live events in general. Yeah. So we have clients that are, um, they are streaming, you know, to their official athletic website, yeah. to their Facebook page, streaming press conferences. Right. Um, we, you know, actually we work with LiveView, a couple of their clients as well, some NFL teams, you know. Their you know, press conferences from their coaches. So those are things where um, they're adopting these platforms a lot more now as well. Nice. Cool. Well, we're here at NAB um, walking around the floor. Have you all seen anything that has sparked sort of some inspiration or things to, like, work on when you get back to the office from you? I've only been able to walk the show floor a little bit because actually my company is live streaming another show here in Vegas. <laughs> We've got three ballrooms that we're covering wow. at a different convention center for 10,000 attendees someplace else. Um, so I was just fortunate to be in town and be, get to come over here. Um, you know, the, the real thing that I've seen on the show floor that's been really neat is the miniaturization of everything. I mean, this business used to be backbreaking. Just... You know, guys that were, you know, I'm going to be, you know, getting up there in years soon. And, you know, the 50-pound camera that that guy used to be carrying on his shoulder would put him out of work as a camera operator at the age of 50. Um, so the miniaturization of everything, because my crew travels. We travel the world all the time. And so we need lightweight tripods, mm -hmm. smaller cameras, jibs that are really small, um, and switchers and encoders and everything that's just continually getting smaller and lighter and faster. I think for me, I've seen, you know, I think the biggest thing is 4K, right? So everything's 4K, 4K, high dynamic range. And so it's interesting to see, you know, a year from now, the adoption for that type well, of Let me content. challenge you on the 4K then. Uh -huh. Sorry. What, what resolution are most of your, because you can see the numbers. What resolution are most of your streams going out at? No, no, no. I'm saying just for the floor. And the show floor, yeah. Because yeah. your streams are going out at 720. 720p. Mostly. Yeah, that's probably the, the, the median. Yeah, yeah. 720p. So, so, yeah, we talked about it's like an arms race. It's like people have to be producing 8K content to be 1080. Yeah, right. You know, so yeah. it is. That's a fascinating, you know, it's a carrot that we're constantly well, plus chasing. Well, the hardware, the machines, it's the bandwidth. So that stuff has to catch up with the streams itself, right? Yeah. So. It's like the number one thing to have is the conversation with a client, you know, to really, like, discuss that moment. Because people get upset when they're seeing, like, four, this shot in 4K. Why am I seeing 720, you know? So it's, it's definitely but good. But the good thing is the client's future-proofing themselves. So when, when they need to go back to that archive or produce content, they have it in the format that the television sets and people can actually watch. So it's, it's smart to do that, but, but you're right. Not, not the majority of people are going to be able to see it in that 4K content. The content is moving so fast right now. Um, you know, we all talked about future-proofing from SD to HD and all that. I mean, I lived through that professionally. And, you know, we never really went back that much to those archives. Really? Um, and we have clients that are wanting now to say, oh, let's produce it in 4K. Let's produce it in 4K. You're a car manufacturer. You come out with a new product every year. Are you going backwards much? Yeah, you're right. That's right? A good point, yeah. And what I think a lot of them don't realize, I mean, I don't advertise it to them, their stream is going out at 720p. Why? Well, because the viewer doesn't have the bandwidth to watch it at 4K. We're not, I mean, to compress it and to get it delivered in 4K, you know, that's all fine and dandy. There's a lot of issues with 4K if you're sitting and lighting it with small LEDs and you don't have as much light and stuff like good that. Good point, so, yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of issues Still to be developed. I love it, though. It's like the, the challenge, right, that yeah. we're all sort of still chasing, and it keeps us all young and fresh. <laughs> okay. Well, let's wrap it up, shall we? Uh, this was fun. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, take One Productions. If you um, are putting on an event, big or small. Worldwide. 
Yeah. yeah. Takeoneproductions.com, yep. right? Take, and takeonedigital.com. Takeonedigital.com. Yep. And, you know, Game Changer Award goes to you, yep. my friend. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. I love it. I wish I had a little trinket, you know, <laughs> to... Uh, We're going to live yeah, you. The LU 600 <laughs> Ultra the, Mini. The Game Changer Award. The right? Ultra Mini. <laughs> uh, go to switchboard.live. I love how you have the dot .live. Very gotcha. clever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, switchboard.live to really... Control panel, log in, and go. And really syndicate seamlessly to all your devices and fans out there. Um, cool. Thank you so much, guys. And for everyone out there, keep it locked here at BeTerrific.com. We have a couple more interviews coming up today, and I'll see you soon.